So in unit number five, at the moment we are working on nutrition portion. Nutrition chapter is going on. In the nutrition portion, up to yesterday's class, we have completed 25 pages, completing 25 pages. Today we are at the place. Today we are at the place. Uh, regulation of digestion in man. In the regulation of digestion in man, two types of regulations are there. One, it is nervous regulation. Nervous regulation can be noticed in the uh, in certain parts of the actually throughout the elementary canal nervous regulation is there it is due to nervous regulation it is due to nervous regulation Saliva secretes. Saliva secretion is due to nervous regulation, stimulation of the nervous system, especially uh, parasympathetic nervous system uh, stimulates the stimulation of the parasympathetic nervous system makes the saliva to secrete. Generally, saliva secretion is stimulated by when the food reaches the mouth. Though it is the general stimulus, sensing the smell of the mouth, sorry, sensing the smell of the food, uh, seeing the food, those things also can stimulate the saliva. Secretion. Saliva secretion is completely an involuntary action. And further, through the esophagus, the food moving, uh, that is an involuntary action. Stomach's churning movement, an involuntary action. Okay. Uh, small intestines peristaltic movements, large intestines peristaltic movement, okay, like this, throughout the elementary canal, nervous regulation is there. That is one more one thing. Further, in the stomach, the secretion of gastric juice generally. The secretion of gastric juice is stimulated when the food reaches the stomach. When the food reaches the mouth, saliva secretion is stimulated. No? Similarly, when the food reaches the stomach, gastric juice secretion is stimulated. Gastric juice will be secreted more. There are certain other reasons for gastric juice secretion, but syllabus no, according to syllabus, the food reaching the stomach. 
But all these ones are coming under nervous regulation. Endocrine regulation means regulation done by the hormone. Compared to nervous regulation, endocrine <coughs> regulation's role play is very, very high. The endocrine regulation can be explained by this diagram. This is one endocrine regulation you can uh, notice. In this endocrine regulation, get the stomach secretes a hormone called gastrin. This gastrin hormone uses stomach as its target. The food entering the stomach stimulates the gastrin release. In the stomach, there are specialized cells called G cells. They are responsible for secreting the gastrin hormone. This hormone stimulates the secretion of gastric juice. So that is the idea given to you here. So gastrin hormone release is triggered by the arrival of food in the stomach. Gastrin hormone is released to the blood. Through the blood, circulating through the blood, the gastrin hormone will reach the stomach again. And stomach gastric glands are stimulated to secrete gastric juice. So that is the only function of gastrin hormone. Another regulation is shown by this uh, diagram. In this diagram, you will notice there are two hormones there. One hormone shortly marked as CCK. It stands for cholecystokinin. Another hormone is called secretin. The commonness for both of these hormones is both these hormones are secreted by the duodenum. It is the duodenum secreting CCK. It is the duodenum secreting secretin. For CCK, there are two targets. One it is gold bladder, other one is pancreas. In the gold bladder, CCK stimulates the contraction of the gold bladder. When the gold bladder contracts, bile will be added to the duodenum. In the gastric chyme, in the gastric chyme, if Let that all finish. I don't know. Is it Adan time? Finished, sir. Adan. Sometimes Bana also will be here. Here. I will. I used to get confused of it.
time is correct. Right. So, when the gastric chyme is reaching lipids, actually, you know, bile is important for the emulsification of fat. So, bile should be more secreted when the gastric chyme contains more lipid. So the stimulus for the secretion of uh, CCK, common stimulus, chime entering the duodenum. If the chime contains lipid, that is triggering CCK secretion more. On the other hand, on the other hand, CCK stimulates the pancreas to secrete its enzymes. Trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, pancreatic lipase, pancreatic amylase, pancreatic carboxypeptidase. All these enzymes are made to release by CCK. Further, another hormone, secretin. Secretin has a stimulation on the pancreas. It makes the pancreas to release HCO3 minus ions, bicarbonate ions. These bicarbonate ions are important to neutralize the gastric chyme because the pancreatic enzymes work in a basic medium. Gastric chyme is an acidic material. So, hope you can understand this hormonal regulation. Are you clear? Yes, sir. Are you clear? Clear, sir. Good. Further, when you come to this diagram, this is an inhibitory work it shows. Secretin inhi and CCK together. Secretin and CCK together do an inhibitory action on the secretion of gastric juices. Okay, so secretin and CCK have stimulatory action on the pancreas, on the gallbladder. They have an inhibitory action on gastric stomach. Okay, on the stomach, they have an inhibitory action. Are you clear? Yes. If you are clear, please go through the notes under nervous regulation, under endocrine regulation. If those things are clear to you, you can, uh, we can go for the next heading. A balanced diet.
clear sir clear so sir. if these things are clear we are coming to the next heading the heading it is what is it a balanced diet so what is balanced diet mean in the now for a person okay to have a healthy life to have a healthy life different nutrients are needed in different amounts understood okay the amount of carbohydrate you need per day and the amount of protein you need per day the amount of vitamins you need per day are not equal understood yes sir if you can consume the food having all of your nutrient requirements in the correct proportion correctly the amount of protein you want is they are in the food not more not less the amount of carbohydrate you want is they are in the food not more not less the vitamin you want is they are in the food not more not less if this way if you can balance your food then you are consuming a balanced diet understood you are consuming what is it balanced diet it doesn't mean that you have to equally take them equally is not possible right the amount of protein you want and the amount of vitamin you want are not equal me less wanted one you take in less amounts more wanted ones you take in more amounts but nothing should be more or less than what is required by the body that is the balanced diet in the balanced diet all the now if you take the components present in the balanced diet you are mentioned here what are the components uh, need are needed to present in the balanced diet what are the components carbohydrate proteins lipids fibers minerals vitamins and water among these all these ones are not nutrients understood <coughs> all these ones are not nutrients majorly fibers are not coming under nutrient okay they don't give you any metabolical support water is also not considered as a nutrient they are not nutrient understood so yes. only nutrient materials are not in the balanced diet the un the components that are not nutrient okay are also in the balanced diet that is one thing we want to understand okay another thing it is among these new among these components different materials have different role plays different contributions understood yes sir okay for an example if you consume carbohydrate okay if you consume carbohydrate or lipids they are they are giving you energy understood they are giving you 
Perzik. Energy. Energy. Lipids are giving you energy. Carbohydrates are giving you energy. They are energy supplying materials. Other than energy, they cannot give you anything. Understood? This energy requirement depends on several factors. What are the factors? What are the factors that decide the amount of energy you want? Age, sex, age, body. age, sex, sex, body size, and activity. And okay, age, uh, sex, body size, and what is it? Activity. Right? In that one, first it is age. Okay. In the uh, young age, that means when you when the age up to 18 years old, okay, up to 18 years old, the energy requirement of a person decreases. The energy requirement of a person, what is it? Decreases with age. Understood? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, when the age goes up, when you are becoming older, your energy requirement is, what is it? Decrease. Decreasing. That is one thing to know. Second is what? Sex. Females require more energy than males. Whose energy requirement is more? Females. Right. Female energy requirement is more. Third it is body size. In the case of body size, if the mass of the body is bigger, then their energy requirement is also greater because to that bigger body, okay, metabolic function should be carried out now. Okay, energy requirement of the body activities of that bigger body should be fulfilled now. To that reason, when body size is greater, then the energy requirement also will be great. Last, it is activity. Some people live very less active life. Okay, you can see uh, normally doctors like people, they don't have now if unless they intentionally. Uh, develop physical activity, their life will not support a, a, an increased physical activity. Understood? Going to the hospital, if they are looking for the patients, they are seated. They come in the vehicle, they are seated. They come to the private clinic, they are seated. So physical activity is very, very low for the uh, doctors, right? But a doctor has another side. That is, he is very aware of the health issues that will be created if the sedentary life is continued. The point it is, if the activity is low, then the energy requirement also low. According to that one, our carbohydrate intake, our lipid intake should be managed by us. That is one thing you want to know. Second, it is in this one, they are speaking about the amino acids. In another place also, they will speak about the amino acids. We will combine and speak both of them. Otherwise, it's a waste work. Okay. 
you know already there are 20 amino acids essential for protein synthesis. It doesn't mean only 20 types of amino acids are in the human body. There are many other amino acids, but 20 types of amino acids are important, wanted for synthesizing protein. Among these amino acids, some of the amino acids are called essential amino acids. Some of the amino acids are coming under non-essential amino acids. Remember, essential and non-essential are not according to the, the body's demand. The body's demand doesn't decide uh, whether it is essential or non-essential. Body needs both of them. Both of them, their availability is important for the body's functions uh, properly. The only difference is in our body, especially in our liver, there are several okay, amino acids synthesized. Liver take Okay, liver can synthesize amino acids. Those amino acids, as the liver synthesizes, as the liver synthesizes those amino acids, okay, food intake of those amino acids, oral intake of those amino acids is not important. It's not important. That kind of amino acids are non-essential amino acids. Okay, certain amino acids the liver cannot synthesize. Liver has no ability of synthesizing certain amino acids. So those amino acids, unless you take through your food, the body's demand will not be fulfilled. Those kind of amino acids are essential amino acids. Actually, there are <coughs> nearly eight uh, essential amino acids. Lysine, tryptophan, methionine, valine, phenylalanine, threonine, le leucine, isoleucine, Histidine. They are names. Every one of their names are not necessary for you. Two of them are mentioned in the syllabus lysine and histidine. If you get to know their names, that is very much sufficient. Very much sufficient. Okay. Non essential amino acids, alanine, cysteine given. If you get to know those two names, very much sufficient. No need additional uh, ideas. Okay, resource book uh, knowledge is uh, majorly enough. Okay, to get 99 marks, resource book is enough. How much? Now, additional knowledge, if it is not going to give you any benefit, there's no point of gaining additional knowledge, wasting our time. Right. So, hope you can understand essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids. Right?
in the textbook uh, some additional points are given here we will discuss this one also once again they speak about protein essential amino acid non essential amino acid as i told you we will discuss them also at once and go because again we can't come and speak about them so if you take animal protein now say you are eating a piece of chicken uh, beef egg like materials in that material all the amino acids all the essential amino acids are available so if you are a non vegetarian if you are taking animal protein for consumption then that animal protein will supply all the essential amino acids to you in the correct proportion but plant proteins normally they lack one no several essential amino acid if you eat one plant protein from that in that one some essential amino acids will be missing another plant protein will uh will be missing in certain other essential amino acids so a vegetarian is forced to consume several plant proteins together to fulfill his uh, essential amino acid need okay the protein you know food the nutrient is protein no okay so here again it speaks about it. here again in the protein they are made up of amino acids they are digested into amino acids they enter the blood stream there are two types of amino acids essential amino acids non essential amino acids those things are repeatedly spoken but here as the energy supply is for the carbohydrates here you are mentioned what are the functions of proteins proteins are helping for the growth and repair of the body cells and tissues okay proteins they are supplied through making protein okay growth is happening repairing of the body cells are happening body has several functional proteins like hormones insulin hormone glucagon hormone like several proteins are there sorry hormones are there they are protein antibodies are proteins most of the enzymes are proteins albumin globulin fibrinogen like several plasma proteins are there blood proteins are there like this so to synthesize all these proteins amino acids are used there and proteins in very rarely can be used to generate energy mainly in a person's body if there is no sufficient amount of carbohydrate and lipid supply if the energy requirement cannot be fulfilled cannot be fulfilled by uh, the carbohydrates and lipids in his body now proteins also will be used for uh, cellular respiration in unit number 2 you have studied how proteins are uh, utilized in uh, energy making process cellular respiration proteins will be converted to amino acids then the amino acids will be converted will be undergoing a process called deamination the ammonia part will be removed from it after removing the ammonia part rest of the components can be converted to a pyruvate molecule or an acetyl coenzyme a molecule or an intermediate in the citric acid cycle one of this one can happen by involving in those processes proteins can also help to generate energy but that is not common when sufficient amount of lipid supply carbohydrate supply is there protein will not be wasted for that purpose right that is regarding right among these carbohydrate normally 
normally if you take carbohydrates carbohydrates we intake majorly in two forms one it is polysaccharides another one is they say sugars through disaccharides disaccharide that's why in our elementary canal disaccharides enzymes are there real now if you eat a fruit mango fruit banana fruit if you eat a fruit okay if you drink some grape juice really we have chance of intaking monosaccharides also into our elementary canal but chances are very 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 low right among the carbohydrates mostly through the food what we intake it is disaccharides and polysaccharides among the polysaccharides some polysaccharides are digestible some polysaccharides are not digestible starch is digestible glycogen is digestible hemicellulose not digestible pectin not digestible cellulose not digestible so there are non digestible carbohydrates also what will happen to them mean they will exit with the feces without getting digested okay if you take the digestible ones the major function of them is providing energy and heat they say you know heat is also a form of energy the energy they make is stored in the atp and used for several metabolical activities like uh, cellular respiration uh, protein synthesis lipid synthesis okay cholesterol synthesis steroid synthesis like that so second it is acting as an energy store they say what the thing it is if you consume the energy releasing materials in excess one portion of the excess carbohydrate will be stored in our liver and muscles in the form of glycogen in liver and muscles in the form of glycogen that but liver and muscles can store only a smaller amount of uh, energy materials a greater amount will be uh, stored in adipose tissues in the or name of fat okay that's why generally there will be an attitude among the public okay if they see if they meet a fat person they used to think he is eating more okay he is eating more but truth it is okay one side if you eat more okay if a person eats more he has a greater chance of developing obesity because fat storage increases but on the other hand certain people get this obesity through their genes okay how much they less consume the materials their body mass cannot be decreased okay so it is not because of their food consumption it is because of their genes and the third one okay facilitate protein sparing you i told you this what is it in the in the absence of in the absence of uh, sufficient amount of carbohydrates and lipids the body will target to use proteins in cellular respiration so if sufficient amount of carbohydrate is there wasting protein in cellular respiration uh, will be minimized that is the meaning for the word facilitating a uh, protein sparing so as we have already completed proteins we are coming to the heading called lipids lipids are again energy giving components in the lipid okay 
in making lipids, you know, fatty acids and glycerol involved. In the digestion of lipids, fatty acids and glycerol are released. Among these fatty acids, certain fatty acids are called uh, saturated fatty acids. Certain uh, fatty acids are called unsaturated fatty acids. So in the unsaturated fatty acids, there are two types, you know. Uh, cis unsaturated fatty acids there, trans unsaturated fatty acids there. Okay. Uh, here also, uh, fatty acids can be uh, divided as essential fatty acids and non essential fatty acids. One type of categorization of fatty acid is uh, categorizing them as uh, saturated fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids. Another type of categorization is uh, categorizing them as essential fatty acids and non-essential fatty acids. The meaning you give for essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids, the same meaning can be referred to essential fatty acids and non-essential fatty acids. Lipids majorly, majorly, they give you energy. Okay, weight basis, they say actually one gram carbohydrate and one gram protein compared to one gram carbohydrate, one gram protein. The amount of energy that can be provided by one gram lipid is greater. The more energy it can give. Second, it is certain vitamins are categorized as lipid soluble vitamins. Actually, those vitamins are also lipids. That is the truth. Although it is not mentioned to you here, those vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, K, they are fat soluble vitamins. They are also lipids. So they are water insoluble. They are water insoluble to be carried in the blood. To be carried in the blood, to be transported, to be stored. Okay. Lipid is used. I mean, vitamin A, if it is, it is stored in our liver. Vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K, they are stored in our liver. So the storage is done in fat materials. Okay, it cannot be done in uh, watery materials because they are not water soluble. Okay, and their storage is the it's an energy storage, food reserve, energy storage. That's that one of another myth among the people. What is it? Fat people have more energy. Fat people having more energy is a it's a wrong myth. Okay, fat people have more adipose deposit is the correct one. That one cannot be very quickly utilized as the people think. And one more thing, some of the hormones, now previously in the proteins we told, some proteins like glucagon, uh, insulin-like hormones are proteins. Here, some Hormones are lipids, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, aldosterone are steroid hormones. The steroid hormones, your book says, they are synthesized from cholesterol. The steroid hormones are synthesized from cholesterol. Cholesterol is a precursor material to synthesize these hormones. And finally, Insulation, okay, in our skin, below the skin, there is a layer called hypodermis. It is a fat storing tissue, adipose tissue. The fat stored in those adipose tissue is working as a thermal insulator. Heat in the body is not allowed to go out. 
heat outside is not allowed to come in. And further, in the right, so in the skin, in the subcutaneous layer, subcutaneous means sub mean below, cutaneous means skin. So subcutaneous mean below the skin, the fat layer below the skin. That's the meaning. It is a heat insulator. Similarly, in the neurons, there is a lipid material synthesized by these quant cells called myelin sheet. This myelin sheet is an electrical insulator. The common term is insulation. But what does the, uh, the contribution of the uh, subcutaneous lipid deposit and the myelin sheath lipid deposit are not same. Subcutaneous lipid deposit is minimizing the heat loss from the body. It is a thermal insulator. Okay, generally, the general term it is thermal insulators will be electric insulators also. But the role play wise, myelin sheath is working as a uh, Electrical insulator, myelin sheath is not allowing uh, electric impulses to pass. This uh, barrier helps the electric impulses to jump over the myelin sheath. So that's why we say myelin sheath speeds up, myelin sheath speeds up uh, electric uh, impulse transmission. Point it is, Myelin sheath is a barrier. It doesn't allow impulses to pass. It doesn't allow impulses to pass. Then the impulses have to over jump the myelin sheath. So electrical uh, transmission is made faster. So go through these contents go through these contents and from the balanced diet and tell me whether you are clear about the contents I have given you. If the things are clear, we will further discuss regarding uh, vitamins, then minerals, then some digestive disorders, then the nutrition lesson will, nutrition lesson will be over.
clear, sir. Are you clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. So, passing that one, we are coming to the uh, vitamins. In the case of vitamins, vitamins are uh, majorly taken through the diet. Some vitamins, okay, like vitamin D, vitamin A like certain vitamins are uh, synthesized in our uh, body and that is the truth some vitamins are synthesized in our body but your book says vitamins cannot be produced in the body it should be provided with the in the diet this is one side it is true uh, but the body produces is not sufficient okay so we have to intake through the food and uh, vitamins are needed to maintain the health of a person and the metabolism of a person. Okay, if anyone says by consuming vitamin, I am growing fat mean. So if anyone is intaking vitamins because he, is, uh, he has a low body weight, okay, vitamins cannot do that work. Vitamins cannot... Uh, make a person to grow fatter. They will be helping to maintain a, a good health, good metabolism. That's all they can do. You know already vitamins are, and so to do that one, vitamins are needed in small amounts. Too much of intake of vitamins is not really good for the health. Too much of intake is not good for the health. Only a limited amount should be uh, consumed. Right? Vitamins are two types you know already. Some vitamins are fat-soluble vitamins. Some vitamins are water-soluble vitamins. Okay. If you intake more fat soluble vitamins, extra fat soluble vitamins will be stored in the liver. If too much the liver stores at one stage, it will be creating an intoxication, poisoning. Too much of water soluble vitamins, if you consume, all the extra ones will be leaving our body with urine. On the other hand, if we don't take sufficient amount of vitamins in our body, several deficiency problems will be occurring. In the uh, resource book, actually, there is one table. I have not, I think I have not included that table in the tube. I will come to that one.
there are two tables there. It's okay, we'll go like this. So, if you take vitamin, vitamin A, vitamin A, it is important for the uh, formation of visual pigment. In our human retina, there is uh, a pigment called rhodopsin. Rhodopsin. That rhodopsin pigment's formation is demanding presence of vitamin A. So, that is one place vitamin A is essential. Second thing, it is helping to maintain epithelial tissue. Our skin is also having an epithelial layer. Third one, it is promoting growth of a person. It is promoting immunity of a person. In the resource book, they have given a table pointing what kind of problems will come if vitamin A is not sufficiently consumed. In that case, they say blindness will come. Actually, that blindness is called night blindness. In the dim light, they will be becoming totally blind. In the dim light, they will be becoming totally blind. And skin disorders, that is because the epithelium is getting affected. Immunity problems, immunity problems, no proper immunity will be there in their body. So you can relate them. Vitamin A has these, 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 these significances. So in the absence of it, these, 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 these problems will come. Second one, they say vitamin B. Vitamin B, when you consider, actually, vitamin B is a group of vitamins. Vitamin B is a group of vitamins. Okay? In that one, there are various types there. Here, you can see vitamin B1, thiamine, B2, riboflavin, B3, niacin, B5, pentothenic acid and uh, B6, pyridoxin, B7, biotin, B9, folic acid, B12, cobalamine, like this, it's a group. Different, of, different vitamins are responsible for different things. Now, in the resource book, they say it is essential for the FAD. FAD, when you look at here, FAD is coming from riboflavin, riboflavin. And the second, they say it is NAD. NAD is coming from niacin. Niacin. Okay. And uh, red blood cell production. Red blood cell production is mainly for is mainly for vitamin B12. Like this, uh, there are varieties there. Varieties there. The group work and vitamin C. Vitamin C is working as an antioxidant. Okay, this oxidation, this antioxidants, actually, they say several, several uh, diseases occurring in our body are due to oxidants like free radicals of oxygen, O0, like free radicals of oxygen. They are the one uh, causing diseases, aging problems, age-related diseases, all these ones are due to oxidants like free radicals of oxygen. These 
free radicals are removed from our body by these vitamins. That's why they are coming under the category called antioxidants. There are two vitamins that can function as antioxidants. One it is vitamin C, other one is vitamin E. Vitamin C is an antioxidant, vitamin E also an antioxidant. On the other hand, vitamin C is uh, important in the synthesis of collagen protein. In the absence of vitamin C, the collagen areas in the person's body will be becoming weaker. The major collagen area that becomes weaker is the teeth. Teeth are fixed to the jaws by collagen fibers. When vitamin C is not enough, the collagen fibers become weaker, the teeth will be loosened and the person will be losing the teeth. In that way, you can understand it. Next it is vitamin D. Vitamin D is important for the absorption and use of calcium and phosphorus in our body. In the small intestine, to absorb the calcium and phosphorus, the body to utilize the calcium and phosphorus, vitamin D is important. This calcium, this phosphorus are majorly deposited in our bones. So what happens is, in the case, in the in in a person, we he doesn't intake enough vitamin D, will okay, calcium phosphorus absorption will not be enough. Then the deposit of calcium and phosphorus to bones will not be enough. Then the bones are becoming weaker, the teeth are becoming weaker, they are becoming fragile, they are becoming, they can easily break. Another thing it is. Vitamin K, it is important for uh, blood clotting. In the absence of deficiency of vitamin K, blood clotting will not take place properly, okay, due to that one, due to that one, the blood loss will be greater during injuries, right? According to that only this table, Speaking about the vitamins also discusses here. Vitamin D, it says bone deformities, this rickets, rickets in children. Okay, why bones are deforming? Because bones are softer, because bones are not stronger. Bone softening in the adults that can cause cracking of the bones, that can cause cracking. Of the bones, for adults, okay, uh, can develop such uh, problems in the old ages, okay. Okay, the disease that is developing in the adults due to uh, vitamin D deficiency is called osteomalacia, okay, osteomalacia, okay, bone will be becoming softened, so easily they will be breaking. Vitamin E, nervous system degeneration, but that is very, 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 very rare. Vitamin E deficiency, and a problem developing due to vitamin B deficiency, E deficiency, very, very rare. And vitamin K deficiency causes uh, defective blood clotting. That means it will not be quickly blood clotting in those people. Here, although in the functions, they don't uh, widen the vitamin B series, in the deficiency symptoms, they have widened or expanded the vitamin B series, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, pentothenic acid, pyroxine, uh, biotin, folic acid, so cobalamine, all as it is given to you in the, uh, what do you say?
Chris, oh sorry, <coughs> Temple Biology book, it has been given to you. So, first of all, we come to the first disease that is called uh, berry, berry. Okay, oh, it's looking like a singular word. So, some people, uh, berry, berry, cuama, some people, what's it? They will start to laugh also. So, berry, berry. Actually, berry, berry disease, okay. Is cause, uh, it's, a, it's not a disease uh, that we can laugh on. Uh, very, very will be created, uh, creating nervous disorders. Completely, if you read what are the characteristics of uh, very, very mean, nervous disorders will be there. Okay. Nervous disorders include here tingling. Okay. Tingling. In the hands, in the. Okay. Tingling means in the hands, in the legs, like places, using a small needle, if a quick. Tricking is there. How do you feel? A small, tiny needle, several places is pricking. That kind of uh, feeling will be coming in the hands, in the legs. That is uh, one issue in very, very. That is uh, nervous. Nerves are uh, showing that they are in problem. Another one, poor coordination. Poor uh, coordination is also mentioned to you. Poor coordination. Third, it is susceptibility to infections. Quickly, quickly they will be uh, getting uh, infections. Third, at last, it is reduced heart function because heart function is also. Uh, coordination so the coordination properly doesn't take place mean all these ones will be happening actually the people who are getting very very okay uh, they will be they will be getting a weaker body they even can't properly walk okay so they can't properly walk uh, they okay they can't uh, properly do their own uh, works, that kind of a situation will be getting created. Uh, riboflavin, riboflavin when you consider in the corners of your mouth, corners of your mouth mean if it, we have a horizontal mouth now, the right corner, the left corner, in those corners, in the beginning a crack will come that crack will be developing to a lesion or wound will come. So you would have seen some people having wound in uh, both uh, corners of the mouth. Then you can recommend if they have that problem and you have a knowledge, mean you can tell them you have, what is it, uh, riboflavin deficiency, take some, take some vitamin B tablets, then you will be cured. Okay, third it is niacin. Niacin uh, is, the disease is called pellagra. Pellagra has several characteristics. In pellagra, your skin, the skin will be becoming, the skin lesions, okay, rashes like, rashes. Now, all over the skin, okay, skin, chest region, hands okay the skin will be peeling out red color okay when it peels out that okay it's red colored redness scaling okay mainly the sun exposed areas will be peeling out the skin your book says in addition to this there will be mental confusion mental confusion can be there they are very sensitive to light 
these people are very sensitive to light okay they have many problems they will be getting diarrhea they will be having hair loss okay most of the diseases will be skin related one okay uh, so many problems they will be facing so most of them are skin related psychological problems also psychomotor disturbance restless so they say mental confusion mean they will be restless shouting okay quarreling different problems will be there and next it is pentothenic acid pentothenic acid will be creating fatigue uh, numbness okay uh, numbness uh, tingling tingling you know the meaning right excuse me sir yes so can you give sometimes to pray going to be shasha yes yes no i forgot it okay baba go and pray now okay thank you sir
So shall we start? Okay. So numbness mean in the hands, in the organ, in outside body, no feeling when you touch, even if some if you cut with a blade, no any feeling. That's called numbness. Okay. And pyridoxine. Pyridoxine, it will be creating uh, irritation. It's really not a right word. Irritability is called irritation. Irritation mean in the body in several places pain will be created and uh, anemia anemia uh, low RBC count also can be created. Biotin vitamin B7 it can create neuromuscular disorders. Neuromuscular disorders muscles will not be properly coordinated through the nerves. Scaly skin information inflammation allergy allergy can be created folic acid also can deficiency also create anemia so vitamin b6 is creating anemia folic acid deficiency also creates anemia birth defects can occur that's why uh, pregnant mothers are given uh, folic acid tablets they are recommended to continuously take folic acid uh, because Folic acid deficiency can cause birth defects. Coblamine, vitamin B12, okay, it will cause loss of uh, balance. Okay, loss of balance. And uh, numbness will be created. And it is also. creating anemia. It is also creating anemia. And ascorbic acid, ascorbic acid will be creating a problem called scurvy. It is the degeneration, skin problems will come, teeth problems will come, teeth will be dissolving piece by piece, teeth will break and come. Okay, that is uh, scurvy. Right, so wound healing, wound healing also will be slow. Okay, wound healing will be also slow due to vitamin D deficiency. In that place today, I finish the session. Inshallah, uh, do the works continuously. We will uh, finish this portion and get ready with the next tute. Inshallah, we we'll start. Okay. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.